Hi, this is Mato. Welcome to my online chess lecture. In this video, I will show you a game between Paul Morphy and Paul Journaud. This game was played in Paris in 1858. Paul Morphy had white pieces and he started with e4. Paul Journaud played c5, the Sicilian defense. d4, c takes on d4, white to move. Paul Morphy played knight to f3. If c3 is played, and black takes, this would be then the smith mora gambit. Morphy played knight to f3, the Morphy gambit. Defending the pawn, bishop to c4, why not knight takes on e5? Is this a good move? What happens if knight takes on e5? Well, this has a tiny downside. After queen to a5, check. Knight to d2, queen takes on a5. Back to our game. Bishop to c4. Black to move. Bishop to e7 was played. Perhaps black was worried about knight to g5. The most played move is queen to c7. The most played move and perhaps the best. This is definitely preventing knight to g5. Can you see how? If knight to g5, queen takes on c4. Well, knight to f6 is also not too bad if white wants to play knight to g5. White would probably play c3, but knight to g5 can be defended with d5. Okay, back to our game. Bishop to e7 was played. c3, d6. Well, d takes on c3 is only helping white to develop. And not only that. What is the best move for white in this position? Please pause and find the best move for white. If black captured on c3, white would not play knight takes on c3. White would play this killer move, queen to d5 threatening checkmate. And after knight to h6, bishop takes knight, removing the defender of f7 pawn. In some cases, players with the black pieces resigned in this position. But there was a case when black castled how should white continue now? Should white save the bishop? Or what? The best move is, believe it or not, knight takes on c3. There was a case when white saved the bishop and lost the game. Unbelievable. Back to our game. After c3, Jarnaud played d6. Queen to b3, threatening to capture on f7, d takes on c3, bishop takes on f7 check, king to f8, knight takes on c3, knight to c6, bishop takes on g8, rook takes on g8, and Paul Morphy cast at king's side, queen to e8. Material is equal, but white has better placed pieces and a safer king, and if black king could jump to h8, Black King would be laughing out loud. But this is not the case. White to move. Morphy played knight to g5. Bishop takes on g5. Bishop takes on g5. Bishop to e6, attacking the queen. Knight to d5. h6, attacking the bishop. This is now becoming very interesting. White to move. What is the best square for the bishop? Please pause and find the best move for white. Did you pause? What did you find? Did you find this beautiful move? Well, this is not a bad move, but there is nothing special about it. Poor Morphy played. F4. Black to move. Queen to d7 was played. Why black didn't take the bishop? If pawn takes bishop, then the pawn captures east with check and after bishop to f7 g6 and this is extremely unpleasant for black back to our game after f4 we have a queen to d7 but now the pawn goes west with check opening the file for the rook king to e8 white to move this is another very interesting position what would you do? Please pause and find the best move for white. Did you pause? What did you find? 
did you find this amazing knight jump knight to c7 check what a brilliant move where is the king going the king can't go anywhere so queen takes knight is the only move white to move and to play the obvious queen takes on e6 check Jernaud resigned why well we will never know for the entertainment purpose i will show you just one line Knight to e7, e takes on d6, attacking the queen. Queen to c5, check, king to h1. Queen takes on g5, rook to f7, king to d8, rook takes on e7. The threat is queen to d7, checkmate. Queen takes on e7, queen takes queen, check, king to c8, queen to c7, check, mate. What a brilliant game by Paul Morphy. What do you think? of this game and uh, that is all i hope that you enjoyed watching this video i wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now